Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Chong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are going over the Dior Holiday Collection and I picked up quite a few of the pieces from here. I've got one of the nail polishes, both of the quints, the blush, and a lipstick. So let's start off. We're going to take a look at everything and then I have a couple of demos and then we'll do comparisons and thoughts. So let's start off with the nail polish. Um, the one that I picked up, this is Bouton Dor, and it's really a topper. So right now, this is one coat of the topper. It's actually a mix of gold and silver sparkle. I have this on top of the Gucci nail polish in Melinda Green. And in the first demo, or maybe the first two demos, I have it on top of the Chanel Rouge Noir. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that, and as I'm talking, I'm gonna show you a clip of it on bare nails, and you can see the difference between one versus two coats. But the topper, you can see more of the gold that's in the uh, Bouton d'Or on top of this green nail polish, but on top of the Rouge Noir, you could see more of the silver. So depending on what your base color is, you'll see more of one versus the other, but you can see how sparkly this is with just one coat. Now on bare nails, you can't tell as much and uh, you know, like it, you're not gonna notice it as much on bare nails, but on top of a base color, it's really very, very sparkly. One coat is definitely sufficient. So um, yeah, overall, that's a nail polish and this is 001, that's the color. And I think it is a really cute nail polish. So this is the packaging. I was trying to see exactly how big it was. And I'll see if I can put that on the screen, if I can find that information. It's really hard to read on here. But anyway, you've got this cute little round bottle and I don't have any of these nail polishes before this was my first. It says Christian Dior along the side and you turn this and you have a brush that is one of the wide tip and you can see that the edges here are curved. So it fits perfectly on the nail bed and I think it's really easy to use. It dries very quickly also. So um, definitely a really nice nail polish. I love the sparkle on this. Very happy I picked that one up. Moving on, I picked up one of the lipsticks. There are two lines of lipsticks out there for the holiday collection. So you've got these Atelier of Dreams uh, lipsticks that have, you can see the imprint, the city imprint that is all over this collection. You still have the Christian Dior belt. These are navy blue. This is plastic. These are refillable, so you can replace the color in here if you'd like. So there are shades in this, but then there are also the Diorific lipsticks. Because the Diorific lipsticks were so bad last year, not all of them, but in particularly the beige one, I chose not to pick any of them up. So this one here is Winter Poppy. It's number uh, 862, and this is the Velvet formula. So this is one sheer layer, and this is going over it a few times. So in the photos, it looked like it was gonna be red, and you can see on the lips, it does have a reddish appearance, but it's really more of a really deep, bright pink. So it's really more fuchsia. And, you know, it's more fuchsia with a touch of red instead of red with a touch of fuchsia. So definitely um, blue base. This is a cool toned reddish pink. All right, for lips, I picked up the uh, Atelier of Dreams lipstick in 862 Winter Poppy. This is one of the velvet formulas. I really like their velvet. So uh, I figured go ahead and pick that up. This is navy blue and you can see, get past the glare, the imprint on the container. You've got this, the same imprint that's on this whole collection. So this is imprinted. It's still plastic. It's still refillable. So, you know, definitely something to know if that's something you're interested in. Here is the lipstick in Winter Poppy. You have the Christian Dior bar on here and you can see this beautiful velvet finish. So I couldn't wait to try this shade out. Wow, oh, you can see it's definitely gonna be a blue red. You can see that pink there. So here's Winter Poppy, and I missed a spot. 
I'll touch this up afterwards. But here is the winter poppy up close. And I'm going to add a little lip liner around the edges as well. I think I'll use the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon because I feel like these are going to be pretty similar. Or, or the Ribbon Lip Pencil. So we'll use that and I'll see you in a second. All right, so here is Winter Poppy up close. And here's Winter Poppy from a distance. You can see that it's a pinkish red. So there, there's red and there's like fuchsia pink kind of mixed together. Now, moving on to the blush, again, we have this beautiful imprint on here. You can see it does come with a blush brush as well. And the blushes do come with one of the you know velvet cases here. This is color 601 called Hologram. It is not a new shade. This is in their permanent line. And this is made in France. It has a one year shelf life. It's 6.7 grams or 0.23 ounces. So I actually thought this was gonna be more pigmented than it is. Let's put this right up here. You can see it's very, very sparkly. And there's a little bit of a color shift because of the, the sparkle in there. But the actual blush itself is not that pigmented. So for me, I consider this more of a blush topper slash highlighter than a true blush. And we'll look at this a little bit in more details after the demos. Now, real quickly, I just want to mention that this Holiday edition is 6.7 grams, but so is that in the regular line. So they're both 6.7 grams. And yeah, all of the specs are the same for the holiday blush. All right, so moving on to the quince, we have 469 Atelier Doré. And this is made in France. It's seven and a half grams or 0.26 ounces. And just for reference, some of the regular ones. Let's just find one that's definitely regular. Um, so this one here is the new look palette. This is also going to be made in France and it's seven grams versus 7.6 grams. So slight difference this is 0.24 ounces, 0.26 ounces. And again, they're both made in France with an approximate shelf life of six months upon opening. So let's go ahead and swatch these. You can see you've got this gorgeous imprint all over here as well. And start so these are the we're gonna leave some space for comparisons there so those are the top two in the middle and here's the bottom two so that's atelier doré you can see you've got some really beautiful brown shades here you've got some warmer and some cooler tones here now, this first one is kind of like a warm beigey brown. It does have some warmer tones to it. It's a satin finish. This next one here is more of a soft beige, and that's a satin finish. We've got the metallic gold. And you can see that it's fairly opaque, but not 100% completely. This next one here is a cool tone chocolate brown. It's actually a satin finish, although because of the depth, it doesn't look quite as satiny. And then this last one here is a matte shade and it's still on the, the cooler side, but there are some warmer tones in here as well. And you can see there's a little bit of a reddish tone to it. So it's going to be a bit warmer than the one right here, the four shade, but it's still going to lean a little bit to the cooler side. Now this next palette, this is 739 House of Dreams. Again, it's going to be the same size as the Atelier Doré. And let's take a look at this. So it's actually a bit more mauve tone. It was a really light on my skin here. And then we have this silver, which is more opaque. And then these are the bottom two shades. All right, and I'm just gonna add a couple more layers to these top ones because for the sake of comparisons, it's gonna be a little bit easier to see those tones. So here are the top two. You can see that it's gonna be like a peachier shade. They're both going to be light, but this is kind of more of a peachy beige. This one is more of a soft mauvey tone. The silver here is a, a true silver. silver. 
and it is fairly opaque. It's a little bit more opacity than the gold one. Then we have more of a medium tone mauve or mauve here. There's just a little bit more. And you can see that these are, so far, um, these are all satins. This one here is more of a satin matte. It's, got, it's still satin, but it's got a little bit more matte to it than uh, the others. And then this last one here is a matte brown. And you can see that they are fairly similar in color. Let me just put a little bit right there for you. So there's, they're very close. There's a little bit more reddish tone in here, a little bit more plum actually, compared to uh, the one in the Atelier Doré. So let's take a look at some demos. I've got cheek demos, eye demos, and then we'll come back and talk about some comparisons. All right, so I just have a very light coverage foundation on today, trying out the new Sicily foundation. And I have a light dusting of the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder on in number one, Mousseline Pastel. This here is the new blush in 601. This is not a new shade. This shade is in the permanent line. It's called Hologram. You can see that it's sparkly and there's a bit of a reflect to it. So let's see how this looks on the skin. I'm gonna take the Chikahodo KZ2 and just gonna get a little bit of blush on the brush. All right, so there's that sparkle right away. You can see the sparkle. And it looks like the sparkle itself is pink. There's like a little bit of this, I mean, hologram's a good, good word for it. A little bit of a holographic look to it. So it doesn't seem to be giving off like too much pigment or anything like that. It's really more, it's almost more of a highlighter. Let's build this up a little bit and see how much color we actually get from it. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say because of the sparkle and this reflect that it's a highlighting blush. All right, so that's hologram. Here is hologram from a distance. All right, so I have on the Chanel Ultra Latent Foundation and a light dusting of the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder in Sparkling Lilac, which I ordered from Fude Japan because it's not available here in the US. And we're gonna go into the hologram blush. We're using the Refer 18. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a denser brush. We'll see if we can get more coloration from it like this. And it's undyed goat hair, so it's gonna pick up a little bit more as well. So, Definitely a ton of sparkle, get a little bit of color and see that. I still think that this is probably best off as a topper shade for me. I don't think I will wear it straight up like this. I think I will end up using this more as with a, a light fan brush and going over, um, going over it with some, some of this. So yeah, you know, if you really like um, sparkly blushes, it's definitely very sparkly. But again, it doesn't have a ton of color on its own. I think it's going to work best for me more as a blush topper slash highlighter. All right, so just to kind of mix up the blush a little bit, this is the 361 shade I'm going in with the same brush. Let's put this on here. And then we'll put a little bit of the sparkle on top as well. We need to but just to kind of show you what it looks like on top okay so here it is you can still see the sparkle through this blush but I do have a little bit more coloration this way and let me show you hologram so this is a refer 20 fan brush and it's like a little bit wispier so what I think I will be doing is getting a little bit of this on and just dusting like this There you go. So I think for me, that's how I'll use this product more as a topper. Okay, so we're just gonna play around with the two new Dior coins briefly, mostly with the metallic shades. So we're gonna put down um, a coating of, let's go in, let's start with the peach. And this is the Esam W21, which is a 
smaller brush, you can see it's, um, this one is sable hair. Yeah, so this is light. You can see there's a little bit of a shimmer here. And we're actually going to move into the shade right below it. And we're going to put this over the rest of the lid. Okay, and I just want to see how the silver performs kind of all over. So this silver is actually pretty pigmented, but I'm putting it on in the in our corner, sorry, they're cutting down trees outside, not at my house, but somebody else's. And uh, so I'm putting it down in the inner portion, so it's more pigmented there, and then just kind of spreading that a bit. Hmm, it looks a little patchy though. Let's add a little bit more here. So I wanted to see what the silver did on the lid itself. Um, Yeah, I think I prefer using the silver more as an accent color, but this is what it will look like. Let's go ahead and add in another shade on top of it. Let's go into it. We'll go into this one here. Uh, using the same brush, I did flip sides on it. And let's just see if we can mix color on top of the silver. I have done it underneath. Yeah, so that mutes it, but you don't really see much of that color. All right, let's try the same thing with the gold. All right, so we're gonna start in the second shade using the same brush here. I did clean this off and we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll start in the inner corner with this shade and you can see it's a nice light beigey brown. And then we're gonna go into this one down here. So this is like a cooler tone, deep brown. And you can see it has a satin finish. Look at that brown on its own, very pretty. And we're just playing around. So this is kind of messy. You know, I just kind of like those two colors together too. Although maybe more of the light shade, a little less of the deeper shade. And let's go into the gold. So I haven't played with this palette at all yet. This is my first foray. I was just kind of curious if it, if the gold was as opaque as the silver. And I do think the gold is a little bit more sheer than the silver. The silver seems to be just slightly more opaque, but it's not a huge difference. Um, so there's the gold with the shadow underneath. And let's use a little bit with the finger. Put this up a bit. All right, so there's the gold. You can see the finger does make it a little bit more opaque. And let's go ahead and try mixing in a color. This time, let's go with this darker shade and see if the depth of the color makes a difference. So you can see it's really pigmented. Let's start from the outer corner here. So this is a matte shade and you can see that it definitely dulls the gold, but look at that. You can still see a little bit of that gold peeking through, which I think is good, you know, cause this would be a great way to darken the outer corner with one of these shades and still get a little bit of that shimmer, but you're not going to get much. So, here it is on the whole lid and you really, it's one of those things that now that you've covered it, when you turn your head, you get like a slight glint of gold, but it's not gold. That makes sense. Uh, I actually, I like it. It's really more of a satin finish this way. Uh, even though we use, this one is a matte brown. All right. So just a little experiment. Let me show you from a distance. All right. So here they are. We got the silver side and the golden brown side. So I have the Vizier eye primer on and we're gonna go into 739 House of Dreams. We're gonna go into the second shade here with the Sonia G Classic Crease and just gonna get a little product up. There, 
there's that. You can see it's a light shade. All right, so there is a little shimmer in that. We're also gonna go into this dark brown shade here. Just gonna get a tiny bit on the tip. I'm dabbing this on the outer corner here, and then I'm gonna take it into the, the crease as well, very gently. So you can see the brush bristles aren't really moving because I'm just trying to use what's on the tip. All right, wiping off the brush and just buffing that crease a little bit more with no product. And next, I'm gonna take the Sony G Soft Shader. I'm gonna go into this shade down at the bottom. So this is the bottom left. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of this on, starting in the middle and working out. And then I'm going to just cover the whole lid with this. I wasn't sure if I would like these tones or not because they they're mauvey, but they look kind of rosy. But I think I do. Okay, I'm just going to dab a little bit into this peach shade and I'm just going to dab this in the inner corner, just a little brightening here. I mean, that, that's a really nice look just on its own don't really need anything else on there but it's holiday let's go in with the silver still working with the soft shader and i'm just going to softly blend this over the first half wow this is maybe i used too much i'm gonna use my finger here and take some of that okay so i wiped off the brush too i'm just gonna kind of feather that over I mean, this silver is, it's a nice silver. I think it, it could really make this look super glam, but I want it still kind of light for daytime. And you can see how that's mixed. Do you see like how you get a little pink reflect in there? So I'm definitely gonna have to try this silver on its own and see whether you're getting this pink with that or if it's because of what's underneath here. But yeah, I really like the effect of those together. I'm going to take this second shade here with the KZ08 from Chikahoto, and this is going on the lower lash line here. And I'm going to use the same brush just to grab a little bit of the silver and plop that right in the inner corner. All right, so this is my first look. We're going to just add some brown eyeliner on the top and lashes. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so this is the final eye look from a distance. I think it's, you know, a great neutral look. You can add more silver and make it more glam. Definitely a very work appropriate palette in my opinion. All right, so we are gonna be playing with the gold palette, but first I just got the Chantecaille eye stick in. So we're gonna test out this primer today, or eye base. And I am just gonna put a little bit on the lid. Just using my finger to smooth that out. And you know, it feels silky smooth, but there's like a touch of tackiness to it. You know, it's not completely like silicone based, you know, it doesn't feel just silicone. It's kind of like that silicone creaminess with a touch of tackiness. So we're just going to do that one eye so I can compare these today. You can see this is the light shade and it definitely looks like it is disguising some of the lines and things in my eyes, the veins that you can see, but it's not a major, major source of color. All right, so we're going to go into the first shade. This is the um, Omnia Gold brush and it's a, the crease brush. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Let's put this in the crease. You can see this is a fluffy crease brush and just kind of buffing that above a little bit as well. Taking the Omnia Gold small crease, we're gonna go into this matte brown shade, the darkest shade, and just going to add a little bit of this to the outer corner, feather that in, just wiping a little bit of that off on the cloth and then just going into the crease. So just dragging a little bit of this product in there. Taking the Smith 253, and I'm gonna go into the second shade, and we're just gonna add a little bit of this here. This is the small arrowhead brush. Just gonna add a little bit of this to the inner portion here. 
So that's like a nice light neutral beigey brown shade. And then let's go into this shade here. This is gonna be much deeper. We're gonna add this right here. You can see it's a cooler tone brown than the matte brown that I put down next to it. This one actually has a slight um, satin finish to it. Okay, I'm taking the same brush, but I'm going into the gold. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the gold here in the center. Okay, I'm wiping off the brush, and now I'm just going to feather those the gold into the deeper shade here. Just kind of soften that a little bit. I think I'm just going to add a little bit more here. All right, so there's that. I'm going to add some brown eyeliner and some mascara to the rest of my makeup. I'll see you in a minute. And this is the final look from a distance. So this is the blush with the 361 topped with the 601 hologram from this collection. This is the winter poppy lipstick. And for the eyes, I added on the upper and lower lash line, the Chanel Stilo Ya in 48 or Antique. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Let's start off with the blush. I honestly don't have anything like this blush. Uh, I don't usually buy a lot of these glittery ones. This here is the 361 which you can barely see. It does not swatch that deeply. It's a very soft, pale pink. There's the second layer of it. Okay, so you can see color-wise, they're not similar. This, you know, there may be some of the glitter matches, but the actual base color is much warmer on the 601. And then let's take a look at the holiday blush from Dior last year. So this one here is number 353. You can see this is very sparkly but we do have a much deeper base here. This one is definitely pigmented. Another one that I wanted to compare is from the new uh, Birds of a Feather collection from the fall. This is 468. And again, this one is gonna be sparkly, but you can see it has a much more pigmented base. So those are really the only blush comparisons I have. These all have sparkle. Hologram has the most. The sparkle, you've got like pink and a little bit of a blue reflect in there, and you have a very pale nude base to it. Moving on to eyeshadows, we're gonna start off with some of the metallic comparisons. So this is Golden Snow from last year's holiday collection. This whole palette is sparkly, okay? So we're gonna take the gold from here, and we're gonna put that right here so we can see how that goes. And you can see that last year's gold is more of a brighter yellow gold. It's also a little bit more sparkly than this year's, which is slightly more subdued. They're pretty similar though. And then let's take a look at the silvers. This one here is from Black Bow. This is part of the permanent line. And let's put that right here. You can see that it's much more of a steel blue silver than the new one, which is going to be a little bit brighter. And let's take a look at the holiday palette from last year. This is number 89, Black Knight. And we're gonna put this one, squeeze it in right here. You can see this one has much more of a carbon steel base to it. So the silvers are definitely different. The golds are not quite as different. Moving on to some other comparisons. You know, this one here, 749 Romantic Voyage. It was a limited edition. None of the shades are super similar, except possibly this one here in the middle with the one on the bottom left. So those are kind of the closest. Let's take a look at those. So I'm gonna put that just right down here. And you can see it's gonna be much more purple. Let's also take a look at 669 Soft Cashmere. We're gonna go ahead and swatch this whole palette, but I love this palette. This is one of my favorites. I'm gonna try to squeeze this in vertically right here. Okay, so you can see that none of these shades quite match. I'm not really expecting them to. I just wanna show you the comparisons in case you have any of them at home. Now, this brown here is kind of similar to 
the one in the fourth shade here. So let's do these two side by side. So that's this one with this one from Soft Cashmere. So here they are. You can see on the finger right away that they are not going to be the same. So this is a Tally of Dreams. This one is Soft Cashmere. You can see Soft Cashmere is going to be a little bit, um, you know, it's a little bit more gray. And then we have Fat 99 New Look. And we're going to take a look at these three. So this L shape here. So here are these. We're going to put these, put one right here in between those from Atelier Doré. That's cooler in tone. This is the bottom shade. It's kind of close to this one. And then this deepest one here is going to be way deeper than anything in these holiday quads or quints. And then this one here is really a topper shade. It doesn't really have a ton of pigment, but let's go ahead and put this up here with the first shade. You know, I'm going to have to re-swatch those. So here is the topper. And then we're looking at this peach shade, the first one in this um, House of Dreams palette. Let's put that right here next to it. You can see this is going to be peachier, definitely more matte, doesn't have the shimmer. Okay. And there those are. I know they're a little bit harder to see because they're closer to my skin tone, but best I can do. <laughs> Moving on, this is 569 Golden Day. And none of these shades here are all that similar, but we're going to compare this pink and this like topper shade. Um, so here's the topper. We're going to put this up here near the gold. This is going to be the closest. You can see it is a topper, so it's very, very sheer. Um, doesn't quite white have the same vibrancy and then this pink shade we'll put that down here right here you can see it's going to be a little bit more pink it's not quite as dusty but it is close this is the fourth shade in the house of dreams so that's this one here and here is 559 poncho you know i haven't really used this one yet so we're going to go ahead and swatch all of these we're going to put this right over here well let's see yeah we'll put it here let's see if there's anything similar that one this is number three so that's the middle shade don't think those quite go this is going to be closest to the first shade in atelier doré but it's not quite the same um, you know, it's definitely a little bit warmer, a little bit more yellowish. These are the bottom two shades. Let's see if we can fit these right here. So, nope, doesn't quite work with those. This one here, mm, that's this and this. Still not quite right, um, but those those two are closer. All right, and then we have 022 Cruise Look. We're just going to look at these two here. So we'll compare this like peachy shade down here at the bottom. Let's put that, we'll put that right back here. Uh, you know what? We'll compare those two in a second. And then here's the gold. You know, I think I just need to get some more space. Let me start on the other arm. So this here is the gold from Atelier Doré. Let's put that here. And then let's compare that to this shade here in Cruise Look. You can see this one's a little bit more beigey. There's a little bit more like of an orangey-ish tint to it and it's more satin than metallic. And then this pink shade from Cruise that here and then we're going to take a look at this deeper shade and this lighter shade so these two are both we'll put them side by side I mean you can see again this one it's a little bit warmer than these two closest to this one in um, warmth but you can see it's kind of like a medium depth compared to the others. 
This is the last one I want to compare. This is 429 Toile de Jouy. And we're actually going to take this topper shade here. We're going to look at this with the blush. Okay, so here's the hologram. See how this also has kind of that color shift? It's actually kind of similar. You've got a little bit more like of a yellowish beige look when you the light hits it the right way where this this is more pink and blue but the pink shades when you get the pink reflect they're pretty similar and the uh, level of opacity is going to be pretty similar on those one thing i do have to say though is this one here is more of a metallic and this is more of a glitter so you've got more of a metallic sheen with the eyeshadow We'll just take this middle shade here. I don't think it's gonna go, but we're gonna squeeze that in right here just to see. Yeah, not really, but we're gonna compare them side by side over here as well. I just kind of wanted to see if they worked together first. So that is these two shades together. And you can see right away on my fingers that they're not going to match up. Okay, so this one's here, cruise look, and this is House of Dreams. Just gonna be a little bit softer, a little bit more satin, and yeah, it's not as deep of a color. There we go. So those are my eyeshadow comparisons. If you have any other comparison requests, please be sure to let me know. And down, down below in the comments, we can add it to another video. Let's take a look at some lipsticks. Now for lipsticks, I have a few that I want to compare this to. First, I've been using this lipstick with the Velvet Ribbon lipstick. So I wanted to show you Velvet Ribbon, which is this one here. You can see that they're pretty close. Velvet Ribbon, though, is a little bit more red. But look at that. It's really very, very similar. And then some other shades that I wanted to compare. We've got another Lisa Eldridge. This one here is Rainbow Spill. Sorry, this one's broken, so I can't really hold it up while I'm doing it. You can see Rainbow Spill is gonna be a little bit warmer in color, not quite as blue-based. And then we have Skyscraper Rose here, which is a bit more of a brighter fuchsia. So the closest is gonna be Ribbon, but it's a little bit more pink than Ribbon. All right, so let's do another swatch of the lipstick so we can compare. So here's Winter Poppy again. And then let's take a look at some other shades. So this is Dior 999 in the Velvet formula. And you can see that this is gonna be more of an orangey red. It's definitely much warmer. It's, it's a neutral red, but you can see how cool this is in comparison. Then we also have 36 from Givenchy. This is number Lantern D in the La Rouge Deep Velvet. Again, much more neutral in tone. This one here is Hermes. This is number 43, Rose Oasis. And this one's gonna be warmer in tone also. And this is one of the new Givenchy Velvets. And this one here is number 530. Again, it's gonna be rosier, not quite so cool in tone. And that's gonna be it for my lipstick comparisons. So I hope all of this was helpful. And again, if you have any other swatch requests, please let me know and I will include them in another video. Let's go ahead and talk about the formula and my thoughts. So first, let's start with the nail polish. I would say that the nail polish is a win. I mean, it's a topper. Are you, is, is it the most unique thing in the world? No, can you find something similar from another brand? Most likely, but I personally did not have a silver and gold topper. And I do really like the formula. I think this is really nice. And yeah, I'm very happy with this. So I would call that a win. Moving on to the lipstick, I really love the packaging on this. I really wanted to pick one of these up because it is a refillable container and I really did want to have something with this imprint. And I mean, I like their velvet formula. I think it's a nice velvet formula. You can see the little Christian Dior ribbon on here. I think it's really a nice product. So these are made in France and this is three and a half grams. I'm happy with the lipstick. I was hoping it would be a little bit more red, a little bit less pink, but I actually do really like the color. So I'm, I'm good with it. It's not a love, it's a like. And then moving on to the blush. 
Mm -mm. I was a little worried about this, to be honest. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But I do know some people who absolutely love this blush in the regular line. So I wanted to try it out. I'm not huge on sparkly blushes. So I already knew it was going to be a little hard for me. It's a little bit more sparkly than I thought, which is okay. I would have preferred it to have more pigmentation, or at least that's what I thought. But I have to say, I'm a little bit happier that it doesn't because I think this works better very lightly dusted over another blush. And I think I'll use it more that way because I don't really use the other ones I compared it to that were glittery, the one from uh, winter last year or holiday last year and the one from Birds of a Feather. They're a little bit too sparkly and since they do have that pigmentation, you have to be kind of careful with the application and so forth and then the glitter might move and so forth. So I think I actually prefer the fact that this doesn't have as much of a colored base because I think I will use it more as like an accent or highlight. And so I'm okay with it. I would not purchase it again, but since I have it, I'll use it. So if you like glittery blush products, this might be a winner for you. And of course the imprint is gorgeous and I'm glad that they have the same size as a regular line. Now, as for the eyeshadows, I have to say, I am surprised that there are technically, there's technically more product than the regular line. So, you know, I think that is a nice touch. I'm happy with that. Kind of makes up for the fact that usually these limited edition collection ones are only four grams and this is actually 7.6. So, you know, it's nice that it is larger. As for the color stories, they're nothing unique. You probably have browns and a gold and these mauvey tones and a silver. That one's a little bit more unique because I actually don't have anything quite like that. But yeah, they're not unique color stories. Do I like them and am I happy to have them? I am. You know, sometimes it's all about having those colors all together in a palette, even though you might have something similar and other palettes kind of spread out. Yeah, it's nice to have them. I have to say, I do like the metallic gold in particular. You know, I think it adds a nice accent. I think the silver really helps kind of tone down the pinkness in the House of Dreams palette. When I first saw this, I was like, oh no, it's too pink. I'm not gonna like this. But it's actually not that pink on the eyes. You know, it's it's got enough of a balance that it doesn't look like a pink eyeshadow. And I have to say, I really like them. I like the fact that a lot of these undertones are a little bit cooler. Most of the palettes are run a little bit warmer and have like one or two cooler tone colors. This is kind of the opposite. These are a little bit cooler with a little bit of warmth. And I have to say, I like that and I appreciate that. So uh, I'm very happy to have picked up both of these. The fact that they're a little bit larger is kind of a bonus as well. I love the imprint. And yeah, I have to say, I'm very happy with the eyeshadows. The quality of these is just like my good ones from the regular collection. All of the ones that I have purchased that are not limited edition from the new line of Dior eyeshadows has been, they have all had very good quality. They have been very easy to use and so forth. There are a couple of palettes that I've heard of in the regular line that have had mixed quality reviews like you can get a good one or a bad one i don't have any of those all of mine have been the good quality these are the good quality as well now i have had some limited edition ones with some questionable shades or something um you know for example the do our birds of a feather that mustard shade in in the early bird palette that's not good <laughs> um but for you know i'm happy with these no issues with any of these you can see how, you know, yeah, they, they just, they're nice. You've got, if you want to take out those metallics, you have fantastic palettes for everyday neutral looks. You know, there, there are a lot of satin shades, but there aren't really glittery shades. And the satin formulas here are, for the most part, very understated, more satin matte than like a shimmer satin. So it makes them, you can get a really subdued look. And if you want to amp it up, add the metallic. But this is different from previous holiday collections because a lot of times those are all pretty sparkly, pretty glittery, 
and so forth. And these aren't. So that makes these actually a really great palette to have for every day because you do have those subtle shades in there. And then you have, you know, your wow metallic shades. So I'm very happy with them. I think they are great. If you are looking for some more neutral palettes, I think these are actually really good options, not just for holiday, for all year. So th that's my opinion on those. I'm, I think they're a win. I didn't pick up the eyeliners or anything else in this collection, partly because the eyeliners that I picked up during the fall collection, the Birds of a Feather, were terrible. Um, you know, so I decided I'm done with their eyeliners. They're dry, they're crumbly. They might start off kind of creamy, but they dry up pretty quickly and then they end up breaking on me. So no more eyeliners from Dior for me. If you've tried them uh, from this collection and they're great, I'd love to hear it. But otherwise, I'm tempering my expectations on those. The other lip products, you know, they look very, very beautiful, but I really only wanted to pick up one <laughs> this year. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am on this collection. And there are two additional nail polishes that look very similar to the shades from last year. There's a red and a burgundy shade. They look gorgeous. So, you know, if there's something you need in your collection, you might want to check into those as well. So I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it or you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already and share this with your friends. And yeah, uh, that is everything for today. So please let me know if you'd like to see any additional looks with these palettes or products, any additional comparisons or anything. I'd be happy to accommodate provided I have the items. So thank you so much and have a great day. I'll see you very soon.